This is a group of students from the University of Western Ontario. Uh, they're from the Anthropology Department, which offers a field school here at the Lawson site. Uh, we're digging in what we think uh, may have been a longhouse that was at this site. The reason we think it was a longhouse is, uh, if you notice, there are these uh, depressions in the subsoil here that may have once been storage pits, or we're pretty confident were storage pits. And uh, these would have been used as cold cellars for storing uh, dried food over the winter time. So based on the location of some of these depressions that you're seeing here, uh, some of these storage pits, we can estimate the approximate location of uh, one of the lot walls of the longhouse. So this would have been more or less uh, one wall of the longhouse. And if you look over here, uh, we can still see in areas that we have not yet excavated, these depressions in the ground here. And if I stand in here, give you a better idea of how low these go. And again, this has not been excavated yet, but this tells us that uh, a storage pit was probably located here. So while we're pretty confident that this was a longhouse, we still do not yet know how big this longhouse was. So um, the more units that we open for excavation in future field seasons, uh, we should start to find what are called post molds, which are these circular stains in the subsoil, uh, which let us know where a post holding up the longhouse once rotted away. So as we open up more excavation units, we should start to find centrally located hearths along the longhouse floor, which will give us another idea of how large the structure actually was. So what we're doing here is we're taking all of the loose dirt that we've excavated, we've put it in a bucket, dumped it into one of these screens, and we're sifting through it to make sure that we haven't missed any small items like bones, small arrowheads, points, or pottery pieces. And after that, we'll dump out all this loose dirt and rocks once we've gone through it and continue excavating our square. This is the midden area. Essentially, the midden area is the garbage dump um, for the natives. The natives uh, would discard a lot of their the things that they used. Um, this would include possibly uh, bones, pottery, um, lithics, so uh, tools, uh, any of these things would end up in the garbage dump here and this happens to be one of uh, possibly 30 garbage dumps that we have on the Lawson site. People often ask while we're uh, excavating here how far it is that we can go down and if you look right over here I can show you. As you can see here where the orange color is this this indicates when the last glacial period was. Um, we usually dig down right to where this is. This is called the subsoil. And we do so because we know that there was no human occupation before the last glacial period. Um, which is why we don't bother digging any further because there isn't anything that we're going to find. Um, there are times, however, where we will find stains in the soil. Uh, it was mentioned before that these are post molds where um, housing might have been. So the midden really is quite a very important um, part of the site and this is because this is where we find so many of the artifacts and it gives us a real indication of, of what the people that lived here were really like. So in this unit we've just uncovered some pieces of pottery and once we've completely brushed them off we take a tape measure and measure from the southwest corner, we measure up and we measure over and we document that onto a sheet so that way we have a permanent record exactly where each artifact comes from because it's very important once we start studying them to know the relationship within the site. Other types of artifacts that we have found are different types of, of pipes. We find uh, usually pieces of pipes uh, bowls of the pipe and also parts of the stem as well. We also find uh, various different pieces of pottery. This here is part of a bottom, so the body of the, sh of the pot. And then we also find different types of uh, pottery that has decoration, which is towards the top of the vessel. This we can tell it's rim shirred because of the top edge. It's a nice smooth edge. Also, how we can tell it's pottery is because it has little bits of rock or temper in there. That tells us that it's, it's pottery rather than just the clay soils that we're excavating in. We also find different types of stone tools. One of our main stone tools that we find are axe heads. 
or it's used for um, removing skin off of an animal. We also find what are called abraders, which are flat rocks. They're made out of sandstone and they've been you can tell that there's a smooth edge on them. That is when, when the axe head is ground down to make it in, into its shape, it also grounds down the sandstone as well. We find various different types of knives. These would have been attached into a handle and used for cutting. But one of the main parts that we find are what we call chunks of chert. And these are flakes that are broken off as they're breaking down the stone to, into a tool, chunks of these come flying off. Now how we can tell it's chert is because it's very sharp along the edge and it also has this sort of gray bluey color as well. And that's how we're able to identify it. It just pops out right out of that midden area and we can be able to see it quite easily. Now one of the most popular types of artifacts that everyone wants to find are arrowheads. These are Daniel's triangular points. They either are just a triangular in shape or they have what are called side notching. So that way it can be hafted to a shaft easier as well. Now these points would have been used with a bow and arrow and used for their main hunting, which was deer. We also find a miscellaneous bone, as I mentioned. These bones are usually discolored by the soil. We never find bright white bones.